Edna Marie Mary. Will you remember me? No. everybody, it's Dear Girl J and today I am here with my June wrap up for 2021 part 4 of 4. I read a total of 21 books this month. One of them was a textbook for one of my college classes that I had to read front to back so I won't be talking about that because nobody cares about that but I did talk about the first 15 that I read in previous wrap ups so those will be linked down below if you want to check those out. And here are the last five that I read so without further ado let us get started. You might be able to hear rain because it just started and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a thunderstorm so sorry. You might get some nice ASMR rain in the background. First up is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. I gave this a four out of five stars. This is the companion novel to The Kiss Quotient. This one follows Kai who is autistic. He has trouble expressing his emotions especially complex ones such as grief and love. His mother is worried about him, so she decides to fly to Vietnam to try to find him a wife. And while there, she meets Esme, who is a biracial girl who is living in the slums. So Kai's mother offers Esme an opportunity for a better life. The only speculation is that she needs to get Kai to fall in love with her and ask her to marry her by the end of the summer. So Esme agrees, flies out there, and and as the summer progresses, she falls head over heels for Kai, only to feel that her feelings are not reciprocated, and it's like the story of that. I absolutely loved The Kiss Quotient, so I was very excited to pick this one up. Although I didn't love it as much as The Kiss Quotient, I still really enjoyed this story and these characters. I really liked how Kai was so different from Stella, and his autism was portrayed very differently. I really liked how that gave the reader the opportunity to to see that autism is different in everybody and their symptoms are very widespread. I actually didn't know that this was an own voices for autism so that was really cool to learn and it just highlighted these characters so much more for me. I really liked Esme as well. I think that she was just such a ball of sunshine. This was honestly the classic trope of the sunshine character paired with the moody grumpy baby and I was just here for it. Also big fan of Quan, Kai's cousin then so excited for the third book in this companion series so that we get his story. I also really loved Kai's mom. She was just so sweet and caring towards Esme which I wasn't really expecting from her. We also get a cameo from Stella and Michael which I love to see. The biggest complaint I probably have with this book was the major power imbalance between Esme and Kai. Her whole entire life was banking on Kai and his feelings and she was keeping a very big secret from him for pretty much the entire book and it just didn't really sit well with me. But I mean overall it was very cute. I really enjoyed it. I flew through it. Definitely recommend people check it out. Four out of five stars. Next up I have The Blood Spell by CJ Redwine. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is the fourth book in the companion novels for the Ravensfire books. This is a loose retelling of Cinderella where Blue has magical alchemy abilities that she is hiding from everybody as magic is outlawed in this world. Her father is unexpectedly killed and all of her possessions are handed it over to a very powerful woman that she wants nothing to do with. Meanwhile, the crown prince of Balavata, Kellen, is returning from his schooling to become the new king. The only speculation is that he needs to find a wife from one of the leading families by the time he is 19 in order to take the throne. Kellen doesn't exactly like any of the prospects that are presented to him and that's when he reconnects with Blue, who is his childhood nemesis. They were friends but she was always tattletailing on him so they kind of had like this love-hate kind of situation going on. Unfortunately Blue is a commoner so he is not able to be with her but then a mysterious force starts wreaking havoc on the village and the two must pair up to defeat it before it 
is too late. Like I said, this is the fourth in the companion series. I wouldn't say that this was my favorite out of all of them, but I still really enjoyed it. I absolutely loved Blue and Kellen together, and I loved seeing their relationship grow as enemies to lovers and we also got chapters from the past where we could see them kind of interacting with each other. I liked how they knew each other from childhood and then we got to see them in their teenage years where they're still bickering and then in their adult, if you want to call it that, life and how they kind of grew very slow burn to care for one another and how they were so confused with their feelings. I really liked Kellen. I think he is just such a little cinnamon roll and just such a sweet little baby angel unicorn. I also really liked Nessa, Kellen's sister, and her use of sign language. I think it was really great representation in the book. We also get a cameo from Hansel and Gretel, which was a treat. The overall story was very predictable, but I do like the twist that the author made to the classic Cinderella story. I also really liked how Kellen incorporated the shoe into the end of the book. I think it was really creative. Overall, it was a quick read, very satisfying ending. I was happy with it. I had a good time. 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is You Will Remember Me by Hannah Mary McKinnon, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows a man who wakes up on the beach. He can't remember anything. He has a giant gash on his forehead. The only thing that he is able to remember is that he is from Maine, so he decides to travel back to the last place he can remember. It also follows Lily Reed, whose boyfriend Jack disappears without a trace one night. She reports him missing to the police, and that's when they start to discover some secrets that she did not know about him. And then we also follow Maya Scott, who has been searching for her brother Asher since he left two years ago, leaving nothing but a note. So when he returns unexpectedly with his memory wiped, she thinks that it is a sign. Asher and Maya share a lot of secrets together and she will stop at nothing to keep those secrets hidden. This was actually a really fun thriller. We get points of views from Maya, Asher, and Lily which I think was a really interesting way to tell the story because we're getting the same thing from three different people and it was just really interesting trying to piece everything together and how they all related to each other. The book is definitely fast-paced. The tension and suspense builds so quickly. You become so invested in the these characters and how they all relate to one another. I absolutely loved the ending because it was not what I expected at all and I think it was just so well done. I'm definitely excited to read more from this author. I have no idea if this is their debut or if they have others. I really should look it up on Goodreads because this is probably going to be a thriller author that is an automatic buy for me from now on. But yeah, four out of five stars. It was a lot of fun. Next up is Wings of Ebony by JL. I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. After the death of her mother, Rue is forced to leave her little sister in order to go live with her father who left her many years ago. She is taken to Gazan, which is a secret magical island where she discovers that she is a half-god, half-human. So on the anniversary of her mother's death, Rue decides to break Gazan's rules and visit the human world just for a glimpse of her sister. She returns to Houston and she discovers that her old neighborhood is not what she remembers and that Tasha may be in danger. Rue must tap into her full magical potential in order to save Tasha and her neighborhood from the danger lurking. This was a really interesting story. I liked the premise of it and I do think that Rue was a very interesting character. I really liked watching her character develop as the story progressed and I really liked her sibling bond with Tasha even though they've been separated for so long. I think that the author did a really great job of interweaving conversations about racism and white supremacy into this fantasy world. The biggest complaint I think I have for this book is that the world building was lacking. A lot of the times I was kind of confused about why things were the way that they were and the history behind it. We didn't really get very much 
much information about Gizan and the magical abilities that people had. I also think that the book was a bit predictable. It was very obvious what was going to happen next and I wasn't really ever surprised with where the story progressed to, but I definitely will be checking out the sequel because I think that the author is only going to go up from here, so I am intrigued with the story, the characters, 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the last book that I read for the month of June was This Is How We Fly by Anna Mariano. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows 17 year old Ellen who is about to go off to college. She's going to be separated from her two best friends so she is determined to spend the last summer building their relationships stronger but then she ends up being grounded by her stepmother Connie with the help of her friend Melissa they convince her parents to allow her to join a muggle quidditch team and so as the summer progresses Melissa starts to grow a bit distant from her and that kind of forces her to become closer with other people on the team and it's like the story of that. This was just a very average read for me. Not much really happened and it is quite a lengthy book. It just became very repetitive very quickly. I do think that it had some great conversations about homophobia, sexuality, gender, feminism in a very mature way. There was definitely a lot of representation in this book and I really liked how a lot of the characters were questioning where they were with with their gender, their sexuality, and their race. There was just so much support for these characters from other characters in the book, which I think was really great to see. I also liked how the relationship between Connie and Ellen was resolved. I think it was really well done, and I think that the book did wrap up very nicely, but like I said, it took a very long time to get to that point that I think wasn't exactly needed. Like a lot of scenes could have been cut out and we would have got the same points across. So yeah, it was average three out of five stars. It was a good time, but nothing spectacular, you know? All right, everybody. So that was my final wrap up for June, 2021. Like I said before, the other wrap ups will be linked down below. If you want to check those out, let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.